spring training for the major leagues is just underway, but the prep softball and baseball teams are ready to play. We've got the previews for you, plus there's still some action from the hardwood. The Lady Knights take their decimating game to the CIF Finals. Do they follow through with the win? North Baseball was an average team last year. Who are they bringing to the field this time? The Spartans plan to make a run for top dog in Pioneer League. We tell you their weapons. And the Tartars lost a few good players last year. Can this talented team bounce back? And in softball, the Lady Warriors attack is different. What is the 2010 strategy? The Knights are without ringer Alex Davis this year, but that doesn't seem to be stopping them. From the diamond to the court to the track, this spring we've got you covered. So Torrance, it's time to get fired up because the sports desk starts right now. And welcome, I'm Bonnie Frickett and this is the Sports Desk. There were only two teams left standing in the CIF playoffs. Let's take a look at the only team left standing on the hardwood. For the first time since 2005, Bishop Montgomery Girls Basketball has reached the CIF Finals. This very young team is managing to take down some significant teams in the Southland. The Sports Desk reporter Brandon Ortega gives us a scoop on the night's biggest game of the year, all the way from the Walter Pyramid at Cal State Long Beach. Hundreds of faithful Knight fans made the drive south to Long Beach to see Bishop Montgomery take on top-ranked Harvard Westlake for the CIF Division IV AA Championship. Bishop set the tempo early in the first half by getting easy baskets in the paint. Sophomore Devin Brookshire takes the rock all the way for two. Tiffany Hicks's three is off the mark, but Chelsea Aaron is there for the board and lays it in, keeping the Knights up three in the second period. Westlake, however, kept the score close. Senior Nicole Nesbitt drives it in for two, and Nicole Hung finds Gina Benedicto in transition. A few moments later, Nesbitt gets two more, cutting the Knights' lead to a single point. Bishop gets a little extra cushion going in at halftime as Chelsea Aaron grabs an offensive rebound and drops it into two. Brookshire adds in two more, and that gives the Knights a three-point lead going into halftime and feeling confident. Bishop's fans were pumped at the half, and it was all up to the Knights to finish what they started in the first and keep the momentum going into the second half. Kristen Ale dials up a three ball to kick off the second half, but Westlake would go on a run led by Nicole Hung, who swishes in the mid-range jumper. Nesbitt got back involved as she scorches in a long three, giving the Wolverines a seven-point lead. Taylor Sansbury gives the Knights a lift just in the nick of time with a three, and that cuts Westlake's lead to four, heading into the fourth quarter. In the fourth, Bishop would get a few unlucky breaks. First, Tiffany Hicks appears to make a clean block, but she's charged with a foul. Next possession, Sansbury takes too many steps, and the Knights would need a little pick-me-up as the coaching staff settles down their young squad. Bishop would come out of the timeout with a new intensity on defense. Hicks knocks the ball away, and that leads to a fast break as Sansbury gets an easy deuce. Again, the Knights' defense creates another easy opportunity, and that cuts the Knights' deficit to four with two minutes left. Westlake was just too much down the stretch as Skylar Sitsui lays in the dagger, giving the Wolverines the lead for good and the Division IV AA Southern Section title. Westlake's defense gave Bishop plenty of problems in the second half. After the game, the Knights talked about the difference between the first half and the second half. We started off really strong, and uh, we were just playing our game, and um, we got the ball inside and ran on them and were able to score really easily. We were rebounding really well and breaking their press easily and getting up and down the court and yeah, second half we didn't do that. We were just putting all the pieces together, we were all looking at for each other and we all wanted it. And that's all we was wanted to do, just thinking about getting the, the banner and getting the, the championship. Despite the result of today's game, Bishop is feeling extremely confident now heading into the state tournament. Now in the state tournament, they could meet up again with Harvard Westlake, and if the Knights do, they have a very good idea of what they need to improve upon to get past the Wolverines in state. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Brandon Ortega. Back to you, Bonnie. And a big thanks to Brandon for catching that action. You know, even though the Knights lost, they learned so much and tasted the sweetness of the finals as Sansbury, LA, and Brookshire, and the rest of the team will surely be back next year. According to Brandon, the Knights have a good shot at winning the state tournament. 
That's all for basketball. I have to report that the South girls soccer team fought hard in the finals and lost, but they might get another shot at winning in the state tournament as well. Coming up, there's a prep baseball team in Torrance that's got a shortstop that's committed to USC, and he's also committed to helping his team get back to the playoffs.